Hi everybody, welcome to the OAGRC. I'm Craig and it's time for us to do another Tamiya catalogue review. This one is the European version of the RC collection. You guys saw recently that I did the um, RC lineup volume one for 2024. This one is the uh, European 2024, 2025, the catalogue. I thought I'd give you a flick through and show you why this one is different to the other one that we've looked at. This one starts off with a lovely uh, piece about Tamiya around the world with some of their pictures of their manufacturing facilities. Um, nice little introduction to the company. Then we have the contents page here, which talks about all the models within the brochure, which we're not going to dwell on too much. We're going to go straight on to the DT-03. Now, I have one of these chassis. You guys will know I like it quite a lot. Comes in two variants, the Neo Fighter and the Racing Fighter. If I was honest, I prefer this buggy. Um, the body on this one is better than the body on this one, in my opinion. Um, but you can't beat this. For an entry-level RC, really good value. CVA shocks are standard. Um, I think it comes with a torque tune motor as well. Uh, yeah, torque tune motors as well, standard. You get a lot of content, a lot of car for the money. There's also the Acura shot as well on this page, um, which also has CVAs. I uh, don't know if that one comes with the torque tuned as well. You'd hope so, seeing as it comes on the other one. Then over this side, you've got a list of all the hop-ups that are available. And what I love about this particular catalogue is you can find the model that you've got, and then you find every hop-up part available for it. Um, so you can tune the cars to your heart's content. Another page of hop-ups for the DT-03. Then down here, we've got the DTO2 chassis. And on the following page, you've got the holiday buggy variant. The Sun Viper is down here, and all the hop ups that they have available for the DTO2, and also the DTO1 is also included in the hop ups on that page. Then we come to the BB01 chassis. You guys know how much I like this one. I wish it was priced slightly better. I'm sure everyone out there who has got one of these will tell you it's good value for what it is but i just wish that the price point was a little bit more friendlier that's all that's all then all the hop-ups for the bb01 chassis and in here they've sneaked in the hop-ups for the td2 and the td4 i was surprised that those uh, models weren't represented with full page spreads i was a bit concerned that perhaps tamiya were already phasing those out but i don't think that is the case necessarily tto 2 b lovely chassis version there picture of that there and then on the next page we've got the plasma edge 2 gunmetal the plasma edge 2 the br variant which has got an awful lot of hop-ups on for the uh the kit priced very heavily in the uk exceptional value for money if you're in europe or in the us and then on the next couple of pages we've got all the hop-ups listed for the TTO2B as well. Then we've got the DFO3, which is really pleasing to see that that is still part of the Tamiya lineup. And also, we've got two pages of hop ups for the DFO3. I am very excited for the slipper clutches, which hopefully, fingers crossed, will be back in stock very, very soon. What I couldn't find on here was the one way um, for the DFO3. And I really do hope that Tamiya are going to give us that particular hop up again. Then we move on to the CC02 chassis and all the wonderful variants that are available for that chassis. My personal favourite is the Ford Bronco. I quite like that one. Very neat. Um, and lots and lots of hop up options again for the CC02, but also the CC01 has some pop ups in here too. Move on to the CR01 which the only variant that I ever see is the Rock Soccer. I don't see these other two available in the market. Certainly not here in, in Europe, I don't see them. But they are listed here in the European catalogue, so somewhere must be getting these items in. I really like this, and at some point I am going to treat myself to one of those because it looks like it'll be a fun build. And there are some hop-ups available for the CR01 as well. We now enter into the vintage buckets. So this bit says it's two-wheel drive off-road vintage buggies. 
And what you can see here on the first two pages are the classics. The hoppers over this side, the Hornet, the Grasshopper, Grasshopper 2, and that Candy Green edition they did. Classic entry-level Tamiya kits. If you've got RCs, you're a fan of RCs, and you haven't built one of these, sort yourself out and get yourself one. This side, we've got the Wild one and the Blockhead Motors one. Good to see that those two are still around, and we've also got the Nova Fox and the Frog. The Frog, probably more of a hopper than these here. Uh, I was chatting to Dom, once the RC Dom today, and he was showing me his uh, Wild one. Um, that car is so scale-like. It seems slightly wider and slightly bigger than some of the other RCs. Really nice looking car. Definitely gonna have to get one of those for the OAG fleet at some point. Sand Scorcher, not something I've had any experience of. Loads of people rave, like that chassis. It looks like a really fun build. One day we might get to do a build one of those. Subaru Brat on the RV chassis. The XR311 compact support vehicle down here and the racing buggy champ there, which is cool looking RC. You've got your Lunchbox CW01 chassis over this side. One, two, three, four of those. Personally, I wouldn't bother with the pumpkin. I do like the way it looks, but the body mounts on it are just rubbish. Always break. This one's a bit more robust. Sticking with the two-wheel drive variants, we've still got the Monster Beetle. Uh, the Wild Willy 2 is in this catalogue. Someone pointed out in the other one it wasn't there, but it is in this one, which I think is good news if you're a Wild Willy 2 fan. Blitzer Beetle, which Dom reckons I should get one of those. He said they handle really well. He thinks it'd be good on the track, so maybe one day we'll get a Blitzer Beetle on the channel. And then the Pajero, which... I don't personally like, but I'm sure there's people out there who like to look at that one. We then move on to the four-wheel drive. The Boomerang, I saw a really good price on one of those the other day. And and I do like the styling to the Boomerang, but again, if you built a Hotshot, that's what this is. The difference really is in the styling. Hotshot 2 blockhead motors, people didn't really like that. They were really hoping out for this one. Tamiya maybe listened, but a lot of people are really happy that we've now got a Hotshot 2. And the Super Saver. Um, again, I saw that at a really nice price of the week as well. Nice looking RC again, but very similar to the Hotshot build that I've already done. And um, not another one that I really want to get on the channel. Super Clod Buster. One day. One day we'll have a clod. One day. Super Hotshot. Really nice. I like the uh, the standard sub suspension setup on there. Dom did a brilliant video uh, recently where he raced his Hotshot against his Super Hotshot. Very, very similar. Yeah, very, very similar. The beautiful Egress. Another re-release coming this year um, after the Black Edition that they did um, a couple of months back. Um, very, very nice car. Would be very excited if I could get one of those on the channel at some point. And then we flip over the page and we've got all the spare parts available for various different vintage RCs before we move into the GF02 chassis. Lots of people have been building squash vans. They came out a couple of months ago. I think the big disappointment there really is it didn't come with bearings. It didn't come with CVAs, which, you know, obviously was done to keep the price down. That in the UK was still a very expensive kit, I thought, for what it was. Um, and I'm not sure if it would have sold particularly well in the UK as a result of that. I think it was more reasonably priced in Europe than in the US. The G601 on the diner head there. Interesting chassis, you still get that around if you look hard enough. And the pickups, these are all really super cool. And both Adam and Dirk have built some of these recently in their channels. Uh, and if you're interested in this stuff, they're a bit more technical. Really, really interesting videos. TTO2, everyone's favorite classic on road chassis. Loads and loads of variants, lots of choice. If you're entering into RC, what I really like about this particular. Uh, chassis is they specifically do well you can get lots of these wonderful body shells they have a, a kit over here that is aimed at your first build first try on road uh, limited edition tto2 so if you're getting into the hobby and you're looking for something to help you this is a great place to start you've still got to pick a body and we'll come on to that in a little bit further down you'll see in a little bit there's loads of pages with uh, body shells on to pick from all of which will fit the tto2 so this is a great place to start over this side, you've got the SRX, that lovely super loaded TTO2, and the TTO2R as well down here. There is the S later on as well. Um, these, I think, are more aimed for sort of on-road uh, on production. Um, there's a lot of hop-ups that come with both of these kits. 
this one and the S. Really good value for money. I love this page over here. I don't know if you can see that. Tammy has done like a little instructional video of how to drift before they've introduced the drift cars on this side. And I wish Tammy would do some more of this. Um, they used to have these manuals back in the day where you could go through and they had all these instructional videos of how to drive RCs and how to race them. It's kind of all gone. And, and this is kind of the closest thing we've got left to it. And I'd really like Tamiya to bring some of that back in these catalogs. Over this side, the drift chassis is with some awesome body shells. Really cool. Uh, not something I've tried, but maybe one day we'll get into it. And then loads and loads of TTO2 options. And still TTO1 E's rocking around as well on some interesting chassis. We're getting a re-release of this Subaru Impreza Mexico, which is really cool. I like that one. If I was going to get myself a, a TTO1, I'd probably pick that up. Uh, and then you've got the racing trucks on there as well, which people still like and still use. And a load of hop-ups for that chassis as well. Interestingly, I saw the other day, they do a one-way. There it is, a front one-way for the TTO1, which also works in the TTO2. So I might give that a go at some point. Over here, we've got the... The F1 Pro 2, very cool chassis that is. I thought that was being discontinued, so if you want one of those, I suggest you get it sooner rather than later. And this Lancia 037 Rally, which sticks around on the uh, TA02 chassis. That's an old chassis now, still knocking around, but still being used for this body shell. Uh, must be a good seller for Tamiya, that one. Just kicking forward, we've got the BT01 chassis. Not to be confused, as I did the other day with Phil for the BB01 chassis. That's the BBX. This is the BT01 chassis. Uh, and if you look at Phil over at Poor Boys RC, he's recently building one of these. He's just unboxed it. He's building it at the moment. Um, very interesting. It can be done in multiple configurations of motor positions and front and rear wheel drive. Really, really cool. It's the sort of big brother to the MB01. Um, Phil had a whole bunch of problems with that MB01. Um, uh, it's a very sloppy build, and I've got a feeling, you know, given that these are on a similar setup, well, worrying that this might be something similar. Over here, we've got the XVO2 Pro. I had one of those, didn't really like it, if I'm honest. I didn't find it particularly engaging. I'd used the centre diff, and I was hoping it was going to be better but in a different way to the XVO one, and it wasn't. I found it inferior in every way. So, you know, I don't know if other people have found that. Let me know in the comments if you've got one and, and, and like it. Um, but I much prefer the XVO one. And it's really interesting over this side, the actual image they've used for the XVO one is the XVO one Pro chassis kit. I've not seen one of those in the market for years. I really do hope that this is Tammy are not just making a mistake and they are going to actually give us the XBO one Pro chassis kit again because I would buy one for the hop-ups that you get on that. So some extra bits for the XVO one and then we move into the TC01 chassis. I like this. Wish they'd put a, this on a rally chassis. I think that'd be really interesting. Um, I think Gavin over at RC Kicks did one of those at some point. At the minute they put that now on the um, Mercedes-Benz. They had that on the Formula E before with the body shaft for the Formula E and they've now got this wonderful Mercedes-Benz. It looks like most of the uh, the TTO2 body shells will fit this. TO8, not a lot to say about that if you're into on-road racing. Must be a great chassis because they did an R variant of it. Lots of pop-ups available. The MF01X, designed as a rally chassis but I'm really not sure it rallies all that well. But it does have some really cool body shells. And some more over here as well. Not quite sure what that one's all about, mind. Then we move on to the NB01, not to be confused with the BT01, uh, but a similar setup, shorter wheelbase, but you've got this sort of multi configuration that you can do. Uh, go and see Phil Paul Boy RC's video, really done an in depth video on this, uh, where he almost set fire to his uh, Julia Sprint. Then we've still got the M07 and I believe the M08 chassis is rocking around over here. Lots of hop-up options for both those chassis. The M06 is still in here as is the M05, which surprised me because I thought these were being phased out. But clearly they're still knocking about. And Tamiya teases us that they still you knew they used to make racing buggies. And the only real one that they've got of any note anymore is not even in here. The TRF. We then break... These are like the braking press bit where 
I think they had nowhere else to put them, so they put them under this blue Tamiya Racing Factory bit. They'd obviously cut some pages out here. Um, but these were the ones that were announced at the recent uh, show. You've got the Opal Cadet, which is really nice on the MBO one um, But I'm not entirely sure that you'll be able to rally that chassis quite as easily. Um, if you want to rally uh, uh, an M chassis, you need this one over here, this XM01 Pro, because that's what they've put to rally. The Citroen DS, which is a beautiful looking body shell. I think Tamiya are really trying to compete with some of the Kyosho body shells with that particular one. And down here, you've got the Audi A4 Quattro Touring on the TTO one e Beautiful body shell, that is. I remember watching those as a kid in the Touring Car Championships. Um, yeah, if I was into my road cars, I'd be uh, looking into one of those. This interests me, but I was burnt by the XVO2 and not sure I'm ready to be burnt again. But I do find that a little bit interesting. That is a, a, a chassis designed to rally on an M chassis shorter base. Just not convinced that this is going to work. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I like this Honda NSX body shell. There's that Type S that, you know, I've been told is really good if you're getting trying to rally a, a TTO2. This is a really good place to start. Lots of adjustment in the suspension. Super Claude Bluster Black. If I was going to get a Claude Buster, that'd be the one I'd get in black. It looks cool. And then over here, two re-release buggies. Again, the Top Force is back. Um, giving people another opportunity to pick that up if they haven't. Um, in the UK, if you're looking for one of these and you're trying to work out whether you get this one or the Evo, I get an Evo because it's not priced much more than this is going to be in the UK and you get a lot more for your money. Um, but this one is phenomenal value. The Manta Ray, if you go looking on some of their UK websites, you can pick this up for 120 to 140 pounds. And I think that's great value of money for, for what this is on the um, the DFO1 chassis. It's really good value. And I'm, I'm going to get one of these. I'm looking forward to this. I love the look of the Manta Ray. Always love the look of the Manta Ray. And I'm really looking forward to getting that on the channel. Right, that's the end of the models. Well, now we're into all the extra bump that you get in this wonderful catalogue. Starting off with you know all the different body shells that you can get for your models. And this is what I like about this this catalog is it starts off here's all your models and then it goes through here and says well look here's all the extra stuff you can get body shells galore you've got all the bits of material that you need for sorting out your body shell all the bits of paint and decals and masking tape and lighting kits it tells you about the motors that tamia do the servos that tamia do all the little bits of extra tie rods that you can get and, and uh, nuts and bolts that tamia like to sell us here they've got loads of option parts for spacers and washers and bearing sets, spur gears, module pin, pinions, motor mounts, lots of options for your CVAs over here, lots of options for your wheels over here. And this is just beautiful. You can sit, flick through this catalogue looking for the bits and pieces that you need for your models uh, and make a note of them. Go and see if your, your local Tamiya stockist has got them in stock. And then once you get through those pages and you've done your wheels, this is just a list of every single option part in chronological order. So, sorry, in number order. So you can look, flick through, find the parts that you need in order, page upon page upon page of spare parts and hop-ups for your Tamiya's. Then we get to this point and it takes us through the Tamiya paints. You've got your XF paints there, you know, your acrylics, you've got some lacquers, and then we've come over the page, we've got primers, we've got our TS paints, we've got our polycarbonate paints, you've got aircraft model paints, some more polycarbonates, then it comes over here into some more painting, how do you paint, how do you, do you, you distress items with your models, or the masking tape accessories, page upon page of wonderful Tamiya products, paint brushes, painting accessories, all with loads of descriptions about what it is you're spending your money on as well. And then keep coming on. Some Tamiya tools, which is always good to see. Always nice to have some Tamiya branded tools, isn't it? And as you get towards the end of this catalog, there is probably one of the most useful pages in the whole book. And what this does is it matches your RC parts. So across the top here, and you turn this the other way, 
across the top, you've got all your models. And then down these pages, you've got every single option part. And it tells you which vehicle, which chassis, the option part is available for. So this line here with all these dots in is the high torque um, servo saver. And it pretty much goes on every kit, but where there is an asterisk or a hash, it tells you what you should be considering as an alternative. And when it's not there, it's saying, well, we don't recommend this particular part for this particular kit. And that's because maybe it hasn't got the right space for it or it's not going to work with that particular model. And there are pages upon pages of all of the Tamiya RCs and what parts work with what kit. For some of them, they just work on one. For others, they work on almost everything. And it really helps you if you've got a particular model, it helps you identify what parts you can use and what model. And that is the Tamiya RC catalogue 2024-2025. I hope you've enjoyed that. It was a very quick flick through. Um, truth be told, I did this video the other day and unfortunately it got deleted, which was really, really annoying. Um, so I hope I've done it justice and I hope I've captured everything in there. Um, if you are interested in picking one of these up, go to your local hobby store and they'll be able to sell you a copy. Thanks for now. Cheers for watching. See you all soon on the OAG RC. Bye for now.